squirt, squirt. If you're not getting a little bit weird while you're squid fishing, you're not doing it right. Looks like we just went through a few yeah, right there. Yeah, like squid. Yep. That light blue on the bottom. A little patch of them. All right, welcome. We are out here today in Nantucket Sound. We're off of Hyannis Mass, and this is one of the few places where you can get a really good run of squid during the daytime. We're out here fishing with Jogo on Gorilla Tactics Sport Fishing, and he's done quite a bit of this over the years. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly knows this area a lot better than myself. Uh, but we just rolled in. We both got double headers, so hopefully we'll be filling a bucket pretty soon. There's a squid, Bert. Right, now we're squidding. Oh, that one made a mess. If you don't like getting your boat wet, this isn't this a fishery for, for you. you. This is not a fishery <laughs> for you. Same thing with your clothes. You don't want to be wearing yeah, your Sunday yep, best yep. out here. I got old, old lacrosse hoodies on. Plenty of grundings. Nice. You mark them, you got them. Yep. Looks pretty good right here, man. Yeah, I just. Oh, you got a good one there. That's a beauty. Tuber. They do vary quite a bit in size. That one I would say is a little bit bigger than average. This guy here I would say is a little bit smaller than average. Um, these things do grow amazingly quick. All these fish are less than a year old. And it's believed the reason why they concentrate in such abundance in this one relatively small area is the bottom structure here is very unique. It's a, it's a certain kind of mix of sand and clay and these squid are in here to spawn right now. Um, it's early May. It's actually the Cinco de Mayo today. Oh, I just lost my double. And this is about the peak time of the year to get in on the action. It, um, you're always one of the first fish to show up in the spring. Usually right, right, right after the water temperatures hit 50 degrees. And it's a short window. You might get a week, maybe a week and a half. Where the fishing's really year. good. Fairies it does every vary year. every year. Every year. It's, a, it's such a tough fishery to, you know, on my end, as far as charter fishing goes, it's such a tough fishery to, to book ahead for because you really, you can book the trips if you like, but it, it's a very tough run to predict. Sometimes it lasts. I've had runs years ago where it lasted almost into the second week of May. Yeah. And then there's some as short as a few days. Yeah, and it seems like once the sea bass roll in, that's kind of what really Drives puts them right an end out. to it. Bluefish. In the bluefish. As, as soon as you see bluefish on the it, south side, it's, over. it's game over. These things, I mean, you'll have more success fishing at night. Yeah. Um, but really, the, what makes For the this, daytime What, what thing. makes this unique here is that we do have a daytime fishery. It always seems to be colder than you're gonna think it's gonna be when you get out there, but today we actually got a beautiful day here. It's uh, still early May, May 5th. 
But the weatherman said this was going to be the pick of the week, and I think he actually got that one right this time. It's warming up. You know, you'll have guys, you'll have guys, especially with that, they'll change their jigs all day long. They're changing different colors, yeah. different sizes, and they, they swear by it. Yeah, I don't bother. I always just pick two and kind of I know. stick with what you get on there. I know, but the more I've had those guys on my boat, it does make a difference, though. You do I think it does see make trends. a difference day to day where one color will be better than another. He is full. Oh, I got a nice one. So. Look at him change color. Yeah, that's the hardest part for Sometimes me. Is not, that's all you get. You don't definitely don't want to set the hook. You know, <laughs> if you set the hook, you're catching tentacles. You're not catching squid. <laughs> and we don't want to be catching tentacles. It's a good idea to let them squirt some of that ink out when they're outside of the boat. You don't want to pull them in right away when they're fully loaded. This guy is still loaded. <laughs> He's going to get somebody. Hopefully it's not me. They do have good aim. Oops, sorry. Very good. Come on, let go. I guess we should um, talk a little bit about the, the rig we're using here. Very specialized. You don't catch squid with hooks, you catch them with squid jigs. Which, if we take a close up on that, you can see there's a bunch of upward facing tines. And what happens is the squid attack this. They think it's a shrimp or a minnow. And they don't actually use their tentacles. They have two longer, I don't know the name of them. I am not a marine biologist. They might be called claspers, but they use those to grab their prey and then they get snagged. Yeah, it sounds right. They use their claspers and they get snagged on that. So we have two of these. I have them tied in line, just using 12 pound test fluorocarbon for the leader. You don't need any heavy tackle for these. You know, a big squid's gonna be 12 ounces. And we just have a dropper loop here at the end. I'm using a two ounce bank sinker. Dropper loop allows you to change your weight quick if the drift picks up or slows down. And I like to fish one pretty close to the bottom. You know, the first jig is going to be about eight to 10 inches from the bottom. And then I fish a second one about a foot, foot and a half above that. And generally they're going to hit the bottom one, but every now and then you'll get, you know, one will take the top or you always have the chance of getting a double. Um, this little jig here is made by Yozuri. I tend to like the smaller jigs over the bigger ones, but it does vary from day to day what's working, what's not working. And then on my top one I have a Yamashita squid jig you did hear that correctly Yamashita and they make some really cool stuff they have some real nice finishes on them the tines and the barbs are a little bit thinner than the Yozori's so they can bend out if you start getting into sea robins or scup but both companies make a, a very good product as far as the rod and reel goes you want something that's relatively light you want something with a fast action, something with a sensitive tip. Today I'm trying out one of these new Bubba Tidal Pro Series rods. 
And so far I've been really impressed with the stuff they're making. It's very sensitive, lightweight, it's got a real nice action to it. And for the reel today I'm using a Daiwa Fuego 3000. We have 20 pound test braid on this. Um, you know, you want to keep your tackle kind of light, have fun with it. You're not going to be here in your drag singing much when you're squid fishing, so the lighter the better. Something that's sensitive and can hold bottom well. Jogo, I love your boat. Tell us a little bit about the uh, the rig we're in here. Sure, man. Uh, so I just picked up this boat last year. It's a 95 Classic. It's a contender. It's got 2150 Yamahas, which I love. I've done a few upgrades with it. Uh, I put a new T-top, which is a little more caster friendly. It's like a Key West style, so it's a little bit shorter, less less rods and lures go into it. Yeah, I like how it's high enough that I don't bang my head on that. I appreciate that. was also that. very important, because uh, like you, I'm 6'3". Yeah, um, another upgrade is I got all new uh, Simran electronics, which I'm excited about. I got open array. It's really gonna come in handy on those foggy days, whether I'm bass fishing or tuna fishing. And I, I, I love the boat. I really can't say enough about it. It's a uh, nice open platform. Yeah, plenty it, of working room. It's plenty uh, of room. No it's, nonsense, it, just good fishing boat. Yeah, yeah, real, really happy with it. Well, I got me. <laughs> Squid Bert. Oh, you gotcha. <laughs> All right, we had a great trip out there. Got a pile of squid. I ended up coming home with about four or five dozen. Now it's time for the dirty work. Now we got to clean them. Um, so this is not necessarily hard, but it does can be a little bit tedious. So we have our squid here. The first step we're going to do is we are going to remove the head. Go ahead and rip that out. The gut should come right with it. And now it's tough to see, but they do have a skin on them. So what I usually do is you have your two wings here, fold those together, and then just kind of pinch and run your finger up towards the top of the tube. Separate that out, and then we'll just peel that right off, uh, let's say just like a sock. And we're going to discard this. I'm going to save this for chum. It's great fluke or scup bait. Now we're left with the tube. And then inside of the tube, we have what is called the mantle. Um, this kind of looks like a very thin piece of clear plastic. Definitely don't want to eat that. So we're just going to run our finger down along the top of it. And that should pull right out. Now we're left with the head, so we're just going to take a pair of kitchen shears and we're going to trim this guy right on the front of the eyeballs. This is also going into the chum pot. 
And then you also must remember there is a beak inside of the tentacles. It's almost like a bird's beak. It's kind of hard. Uh, if we can get a close up on it, you can see it's pretty sharp. And you definitely don't want to get bit by a squid. They can do a little bit of damage with that. So we're just going to pop that out. And there you have your tentacles. This one came out pretty clean, but I also just like to kind of squeeze this like a tube of toothpaste, make sure there's nothing left inside the tube. This one is clean. And that one is good to go. One squid down. Already got ink on the sink. Nice fresh parsley. So most of the squid that I brought home, I'm gonna vacuum seal and freeze. Squid is one of those few things in the world that is actually, I think, sometimes better when it's been frozen. A lot like octopus, it sort of tenderizes it. And today with some of the fresh stuff, I'm gonna be making some grilled chorizo stuffed calamari sausages. This is a pretty easy recipe. I learned about this um, on the webpage from the Town Doc. It's called, it's one of the largest wholesalers of squid in the Northeast. They got some really good recipes on their website. And this is one of theirs. I can't take credit for it. We're gonna start with some fresh breadcrumbs. I like to use English muffins for these, just cause they're a little bit easier to cut up and they give a nice crumb. Pretty much any time I'm using fresh breadcrumbs. I'll go with the old English muffins. This can be sort of a coarse crumb. We don't need to go too crazy chopping this up. And we're looking for about a cup of breadcrumbs. And usually, the other reason I like English muffins is you get about one cup of crumbs out of each muffin. Let's see how well that worked. One muffin gives you about a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm just gonna do a half of another one. We got about one and a half cups of crumbs there. We're gonna add these to a large bowl. Now to that bowl, we are gonna add half a cup of milk. And that's gonna soften up the crumbs. I'm gonna let this sit for a minute or two until the bread soaks up all that milk. While that's soaking it up, we're gonna do, say about a half a cup, three quarters of a cup of fresh parsley. And we're also gonna want about a tablespoon of minced garlic. We wanna mince these up pretty fine because we're gonna be grilling it. We're not actually cooking the stuffing before we stuff the calamari tubes with it. We're also gonna chop up a few of the tentacles so those don't go to waste. Next we're gonna add in about a half a pound of ground chorizo. This is a Portuguese sausage. If you can't find it already ground up like this, you can certainly just use a regular sausage. We've even made these with Italian sausages, but I just like this because it's already kind of crumbled up and it's easy to work with. And the last thing in this, this is really the only thing we need to cook other than grilling the squid, is fennel seeds. We're going to want to toast about a tablespoon of fennel seeds. This is kind of a crucial ingredient. Fennel seeds are what they put in Italian sausages that give it that kind of unique flavor. And we're just going to kind of want to toast these for about a minute or two. It's really going to release their flavor. Keep a good eye on them, make sure we don't burn them. Keep moving in the pan. Now after about a minute or two, you're really gonna be able to start smelling these. They become real fragrant. When they're at that stage, they're ready to go. Woody, you want half an English muffin? Oh boy. 
Now we're just going to want to give these fennel seeds a little dice. Don't worry about getting every single one, it's not going to happen. Just want to chop them up as best we can, that's going to really help them release their flavor. Now just give this a really good mix, stir everything together. Last but not least, we're going to give this a little bit of salt. It's a little less than a quarter teaspoon of salt. Might as well add some black pepper, make a little more heat. Now it's time to stuff our tubes. If anybody knows a better way to go about this, I'd love to hear about it. I usually just use a spoon. And just kind of jam it in there and pack it in with my fingers. Make sure you get that all the way down into the of the tube, use the back of the knife, just use the back of the spoon to pack that in. And you do have to be careful not to overstuff these. If you do overstuff them, the chances of them exploding on the grill become much greater. So all this stuff is going to expand as it's heated. And you're going to want to leave about a half an inch from the end of the tube, don't stuff it all the way to the end. And we'll just secure that with a toothpick. All right, after your tubes are stuffed, we're just gonna give these a drizzle of olive oil and we're gonna hit them with some salt and pepper. Don't be shy with the olive oil. Wanna make sure we get these well coated, that's gonna keep them from sticking to the grill. Gonna hit them on both sides, a little salt and pepper. This is how I like to light my charcoal grill. We got a paraffin wax stick in there once that baby gets lit up nice and good. Top that off. This little doohickey here is called the chimney and this is the best way to get your charcoal going. So we've had our charcoal here in the chimney for about 15 minutes. Once you can start seeing the red glow in that middle hole there that tells you it's just about hot enough. We're going to want to dump this on one side of the grill for indirect heating. We want to get that charcoal to the point where it's about 85-90% gray on the outer edges. We don't want to see a lot of smoke still coming off it. So it's just about there. Put the grate on, let that get nice and hot. We're going to put a lid on this, let that sit another five minutes, and by then it should be nice and red hot. All right, we got our charcoal nice and red hot here. It's time to fire our squid sausages. Now, I prefer using charcoal when I can. I think it's a lot better for fish just because it, it cooks at a much higher temperature. The gas grill, you might be able to get that up north of 500, maybe 550 degrees. And charcoal, you can get up seven, 800 degrees and it just helps get a nice sear on seafood. So the coal's all set on one side of the grill. I'm gonna start these off real hot, try to get a nice sear. I'm gonna, for here, cover it on the cooler side of the grill. You can see it's hot enough to light a toothpick on fire. Some here, serious heat coming out of that charcoal right now.
Once we get some good sear marks, we're going to move them over to the cooler side of the grill. So we did those for about three or four minutes over direct heat. We're going to set them over here in the cooler side and we're going to try to get these up to an internal temperature of around 150 degrees just to make sure that garlic's cooked all the way through in there. And that should only take a couple more minutes. This guy got overstuffed a little bit. It's starting to explode. And now we drink beer. Cheers. We just want to get these up to about 150, 155 degrees in the thickest part. And we did have some raw garlic in there. And I would say these guys are done. Time to pull them. Now we're just going to give these guys a little drizzle of olive oil and we're ready to serve. Pair these with a nice little garden fresh salad. Now it is time to pick out. Just make sure you don't eat that toothpick. That'll ruin your day. And these do come out tasting a lot like a sausage. If you stuffed this in a bun and dumped a bunch of mustard on it, you would probably think you were eating a sausage. The, the squid tube kind of acts like that casing on the sausage. Mm-mm-mm. That's a good batch. All right, Adam, put that camera down. Start eating.